Howdy. The point of this video is to see what happens when we combine a proper rotation axis with a translation vector. And what we're going to see is that this generates a new rotation axis. And that rotation axis is located at a very specific position with respect to the original rotation axis and that translation vector. Um, and that is given by this expression here. So in order to see what this means, we're going to work through an example. And our example is going to be a threefold rotation axis. And so I will label that A alpha. And in this case, alpha equals 2 pi over 3 radians, or 120 degrees. Uh, so we're going to combine this with a translation vector, T. And we immediately see that there's a new rotation axis over here, um, A alpha prime, let's call it. And we can also uh, rotate this whole thing by an angle alpha, and we will see the translation vector will map up here, and there's a rotation axis up here. So this is all uh, this is all pretty clear, um, but this hasn't uh, this hasn't told us anything about this new rotation axis. So in order to do that, let's consider some point P, and um, we're going to first rotate this point by the original rotation axis. And so that rotes, rotates 2 pi over 3 up to this position. I'll call this P prime. And then we're going to translate uh, that um, new position by the translation vector. And it is going to map uh, roughly over here. And I'll call that P double prime. And so what this theorem is saying is that the combination of those two steps are equivalent to the rotation around a new rotation axis. Um, so I kind of know where this one's going to end up, but uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to see where that one is um, by this expression. And so we're going to call this new rotation axis B alpha. And we can already start to see that this point P rotates up to P double prime. And so the new rotation axis is uh, the same rotation angle as the original uh, rotation axis. Um, so this second part is describing the location of B alpha. And so what it's saying is that OB, which is the distance between the bisector, I'm going to call this point O, and our new rotation axis. So this here is the length OB, and that's given by half of that translation distance, where this is half of the original translation vector distance, times the cotangent of alpha over 2. Um, so in this case, alpha is 2 pi over 3. So this expression equals t over 2 cotangent of pi over 3, which is the same as uh, the square root of 3 over 6 times t. Uh, and what that means in this particular case is that if I um, keep propagating these rotation uh, vectors by the, or rotation axes by the translation vector, to fill out all space, I can see um, that I have my threefold rotation vectors filling some lattice and space. And this new rotation axis, B alpha, is located in the center of this particular equilateral triangle. Um, and so you can, you know, because this is a 60 degree angle, you can also draw a smaller triangle inside here. That's a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. I know this particular distance here is t over 2. Since that's 30 degrees, this length here uh, is going to be square root of 3 over 6 times t. So that is, uh, that is consistent with uh, the equation that we just worked through. Of course, we're going to find a new rotation axis in the center of all of these um, existing threefold rotation axes. So that is the significance of this equation. Um, the next video uh, is going to, when we're talking about uh, two-dimensional lattices, 
uh, we're going to see what constraints that uh, this this net uh, in, that this relationship imposes on the the net of rotation axes that is available in two dimensions. Thanks.